Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here another movie review, this time for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, or aka Aquaman 2. Now just to jump into this film, as far as the DCEU goes, uh, in terms of quality, they've been like, like overall I've enjoyed the DCEU, like I know a lot of people have had like mixed feelings about a lot of their movies and stuff like that, and it seems like everybody wants something different from DC, and I pretty much am able to just judge the movies as the movies. Like I liked Batman vs. Superman, the ultimate cut, I didn't love it, but I liked it, I'd give it like a 3 out of 4. I thought it was a good like darker superhero type movie, and I really like Man of Steel, like Henry Cavill has pretty much slowly become like my favorite Superman now at this point. It used to be Chris Reeve, for the longest time it was Chris Reeve, but now I think I'm, and now I think it's, I'm pro Henry Cavill. I just like his more, uh, like, uh, seriousness, uh, serious approach to the role and everything, and, uh, with how he, uh, with how he's handled in terms of being Superman and everything. Even though I do like the more lighthearted versions that, uh, that was done with, uh, Christopher Reeve. And it's not to say that Batman vs. Superman is a perfect movie or anything. Like, overall, like I said, I like that movie. I don't love it. I think it has some flaws. I think Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor is really bad. Um, I've never warmed up to that version of Lex Luthor. But overall, I enjoyed that movie for what it was, which pretty much felt like a live-action Dark Knight Returns adaptation combined with Death to Superman. Um, this one, Aquaman 2, the first Aquaman, I gave it like a 3 out of 4. Um, I liked it. I thought it was a fun, good adventure DC movie. This one, um, I actually liked it more than the first. Um, I'd give it a 3.5 out of 4. It's a pretty good, fun, adventure-toned movie. It is not a great film. It is not a perfect film. This film is too long. For most of the film, it's in kind of like the, uh, decent to good range for most of the movie because it is so long. I have fun. With Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa and this teamed up, he has to break his brother out so he can get his brother's help to stop Black Manta, who's destroying Atlantis. And, of course, he wants to get revenge on Arthur, played by Jason Momoa, uh, because of his dad's death from the first movie. Black Manta, uh, the character, when it gets to the end and it's like the action fight scenes between him and Aquaman, it is pretty fun. Like, they're well choreographed and well put together. Um, but at the same time, Black Manta really feels like a B-level villain in terms of, like, bad guys and all that. He does, just does not feel like an A-level character. And he's, like, Aquaman's most popular villain or whatever a main nemesis from the comics and you just really do not feel that for a lot of this movie because he's because most of the movie i think what it is because most of the movie is focused on uh, arthur and uh, uh, patrick wilson patrick wilson does a great job here he's the one that gets the actual character arc in the film of kind of being like you know worry about working with arthur and everything because there are problems in the first movie up until the end of the movie where he eventually you know pretty much becomes a good guy and aquaman lets him go at the end because he helps save his son his son gets kidnapped by black manta at the end he needs to like basically sacrifice him so he can release this ancient uh, Atlantean tribe or whatever who was like the brother of the original king of Atlantis because they pretty much want to take over um, Atlantis or whatever's left of Atlantis and reestablish their kingdom. It is a bit clunky in like terms of what the main like main villain wants because Black Manta is really not the main villain here. It's really like this ancient Atlantean dude or whatever who has like this horror movie like Cthulhu type look or whatever. You can tell it's definitely designed by James Wan and I, I like the horror element at the end with all the monsters and stuff like that who are like part of like this old Atlantean kingdom and everything because they were transformed by dark magic. That's pretty cool. Uh, the whole thing about like uh, Black Manta using the power that he's been given by this old Atlantean king or whatever to like speed up global warming. It never really explains what he's hoping to do with that. It's like basically just going to destroy the earth or whatever and flood everything and also destroy Atlantis. It never like Black Manta's just possessed so it's just the fact that it's just the fact that this guy's just crazy because he's just mind just taken over and he just wants to buy this he's mind just taken over by this old Atlantean king so he's just basically crazy so he's just going along with what this old Atlantean king spirit wants or whatever that's controlling him at the same time because he just wants to kill Aquaman that's pretty much it um, I'll say this, this movie does pull punches, uh, there's some editing in this to where you can tell there's definitely reshoots that took effect here, like when Aquaman's house gets attacked by Black Manta, but his dad, like, uh, gets left to live, he's, probably, Black Manta, like, is like, I'm gonna let you live long enough to tell Arthur what happened here, or whatever, and I'm like, you don't really need to do that, like, he's gonna know that you kidnapped his son when he shows up and the whole damn place is burned down, and editing's, like, really weird here, you can tell that they've cut some stuff here and all that, uh, Amber Heard, she's in the movie more than I thought she would be, but she's definitely more of a side character here compared to the first movie, and her acting is bad in some scenes, but overall here in terms of her being in the movie, I actually felt like the movie could have benefited from her being in here more. Like, I don't like Amber Heard uh, as a person, but as an actress, uh, or as the character Mira or whatever, she's an important character in terms of Aquaman's mythology, and I do think this movie would have benefited from probably having a little bit more of her, but the scenes that she does get... They're fine, and when you get to the end or whatever, and she's helping Aquaman, like, rescue their son and all that, it's well done, it's fine. Um, but I do think Aquaman's dad should have died in this movie. Um, the plot here uh, is paper thin. It's really thin. 
but it's fun. If you like Jason Momoa and you like Jason Momoa's like uh, style as Aquaman and all that, like Aquaman is still pretty much a B-list character. But if you really like Jason Momoa and like his fun elements that he brings or whatever and charisma as Aquaman, you'll enjoy this movie. Uh, so there's going to be some people who are disappointed in this movie because it's not like um, it doesn't uh, work as like the ending of the DCEU because that's not it's not what it was designed to be. This was just you, when you watch this movie, you can tell this was just created to be. Aquaman 2, that's it. And as Aquaman 2, this is a pretty good sequel. It is still a thin plot. Uh, the plot in the first movie had a bit more going on, but this movie is more entertaining than that first movie. It's a bit goofier, and uh, some of the goofiness was a little much for me at times. Uh, but overall, it's not that much goofier than the first movie. Like when Aquaman's saying stuff like, I could have just peed on it. Like, it's not that much far removed from that first movie in terms of tone. And it is fun. Jace Momoa doing his stuff and all that is fun. If you like the first Aquaman, there's no reason you wouldn't enjoy this one. So I'd give this a three and a half out of four. It is a fun movie. You've seen Jace Momoa do his thing. And it's fun with him and Patrick Wilson and all that. And by the end, it's just like what I'm saying. The story is just really rote here. And the story in the first one wasn't anything to write home about. But because it was the first, you know, Aquaman movie, it's more forgivable there because it's, you know, obviously going to be an origin story for the most part here uh it is it does feel more rote overall as a plot and more thin but when you get to the action and stuff like that and just the pure fun of the movie of aquaman hanging with patrick wilson it just feels like the movie's having more fun with this concept of aquaman and for that reason it's more entertaining than the first movie so overall in terms of just pure enjoyment there's more here to laugh with and at in terms of just pure enjoyment so that's the reason why i enjoyed this one more than the first and if you look on rotten tomatoes critics seem to like this one less than the first but audiences like it more. It has a higher score. And I agree. Uh, I agree with audiences on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I think this is better than the first. Just in terms of pure enjoyment. Uh, entertainment factor. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you again.